The next thing to do is a range of solubility tests. The solubility tests will tell you a little bit more about which functional groups are present in your compound. If you have very polar functional groups like alcohols or amines, they'll be soluble in water. If you have acids, they'll be soluble in bases. And if you have bases, they'll be soluble in acids. Many organic compounds aren't soluble at all, however. Quite often it's difficult to see if two clear liquids are dissolving or not. So look for mixing lines like these ones that you see here. Even if all of the substance doesn't dissolve, the presence of these mixing lines will tell you that it's at least partially soluble. If you think you have an amine because of the previous tests that you've done, don't put it into concentrated sulfuric acid because a violent reaction will occur. When you've completed the physical OBS, the Lysanes test, the flame test and the solubility test, you should have a pretty good idea about what functional groups and what elements are present in your compound. At this point, have a look at the spectra. The infrared spectra will tell you about which functional groups are present. Don't just look for what's present, but also look for what's not present, because this can tell you a lot about the structure of your compound. The second spectra to look at is the mass spec. This will tell you the molecular weight of your compound. And the molecular weight, together with the melting point or boiling point that you did earlier, will tell you a lot about which compound you have. The third spectra that you should look at is an NMR spectra. The NMR spectra will tell you about the actual structure of your compound and you'll be able to tell, for example, if you have a primary or a secondary amine. You can confirm the presence of functional groups using some colorimetric functional group tests. There's a wide range of these tests. Just carry out the ones that you need to confirm what you know already. If you think you have an alcohol, for example, run the series of alcohol tests which will tell you if it's a primary alcohol, a secondary alcohol or a tertiary alcohol. Similarly, there's a range of tests for amines that will tell you if they're aliphatic amines or aromatic amines or if the amine group is at the end of the molecule. This sort of information, once again, will be really useful in you trying to put together the structure of your molecule. The final step for confirmation is to prepare a derivative from your unknown. You need to choose a derivative that has a melting point that's really different from your starting material and also that's really different from other derivatives. For example, if you weren't sure whether you had one phenylethylamine or two phenylethylamine, if you made the carbide derivative, they only have a difference of four degrees in melting point, so you still won't be able to tell those apart. Make sure your derivative that you choose has a very different melting point. Finding out the identity of an unknown organic compound like this really is quite fun. It's a bit like a jigsaw puzzle. Every test that you do gives you a little bit more information which you can put together and hopefully at the end find out exactly what the unknown compound is. Good luck!